Hello, everyone, and welcome to our interview series marking the 200th birth anniversary of Gregor Mendel, the father of modern genetics. I'm Asta Vatsai, a PhD student in Dr. Vinod Skarya's lab. Today, we have with us Dr. K. Tangaraj, director of the Center for DNA Fingerprinting and Diagnostics. Sir is a pioneer and has made outstanding contributions in the field of population and medical genetics and has served as the president of the Indian Society of Human Genetics. His work highlighting the origins of the tribal populations of Andaman and Nicobar Islands and subsequently the admixed nature of the present day Indian populations have been groundbreaking. Welcome, sir. It's an honor to have you with us today. Thank you. Thank you very much for speaking to me on this occasion of uh, 200 birth anniversary of uh, Mendel. Uh, sir, uh, you have made significant contributions to the very important study of Indian populations and subpopulations, which is something uh, not uh, a lot of which we get to see. Most studies are regarding uh, Western uh, populations. Uh, so could you enlighten us about whether what your current uh, research interests are? And are you still uh, focusing on Indian populations? Yes, uh, I have very diverse uh, interest, research interests. So one of my primary research interests is to understand Indian population history. Broadly, we can say South Asian uh, uh, population history. Uh, in addition to population genetics, we also work on genetic aspects of uh, some of the diseases, including cardiovascular diseases, uh, cardiomyopathy in particular, then genetic aspects of male infertility, uh, genetic aspects of various uh, mitochondrial disorders, neuromuscular diseases in particular. Uh, we also work uh, very little bit uh, on the genomic uh, understanding of Ayurveda, right? So it's very diverse research interest. Diverse indeed, sir. Um, sir, how do you think uh, Mendel's uh, discoveries have impacted your work and your entire body of work in the past as well in the present and the future? Yeah, definitely, uh, because that's the impact what he created, uh, you know, uh, maybe 150 years back. Uh, that is what most of us are utilizing as a tool to uh, study uh, genetics, particularly human genetics, right? Without uh, the, the basic concept of his uh, laws, uh, there's no genetics, right? And um, particularly, I must say that uh, having born and brought in a village, okay, where I was part of the uh, agriculture, okay, in the village, uh, my parents are farmers, so I, I could directly correlate with the Mendel's law, which we studied in the school days, those days, but I see in the field when plant, right, and even the people uh, selecting seed for better varieties and many other aspects. So that has uh, much more uh, impacted my research career. And uh, that's how I took genetics as my uh, MPhil degree, then followed genetics in my PhD, particularly human genetics. So definitely that has a very, very high impact on my uh, uh, research career for the last 30 years. Interesting, sir. So you've seen genetics in action right from the beginning. Uh, yes. Uh, sir, uh, for the science community, definitely genetics is important, but do you also think that it's important for the layman to understand at least some degree of genetics? Yeah, now uh, people are understanding, even if you go to remote village, they understand because so they directly see what was there in the previous generation, so what is there in this generation, so what is going to be the next generation. Right. So that's nothing but uh, genetics. Right, that is but uh, right. what uh, Mendel's uh, finding. Right, so uh, if you look at all the biology subject, right, I think genetics is the one which connects every other subject. Okay, let it be microbiology or uh, anatomy or pharmacology or any uh, subject if you take either uh, bio, plant biology or zoology, anything. So genetics is always there. <laughs> Right. right. So, you cannot uh, see genetics as a separate 
uh, standalone subject. It's every everywhere, and definitely people are well aware of genetics, particularly now because they know that okay, there is a mutation in a child which leads to the disease, and now people are going for uh, prenatal diagnosis because they know there is a genetic defect in the child. So they wanted to see uh, in the future, right? So now almost everybody knows about genetics. You're right, sir. I think people are observing now that, for instance, certain diseases tend to run in families, multiple members, multiple generations. So slowly the awareness is definitely increasing. Uh, so genetics is directly linked with um, translational work or with, with it has direct health impacts. Uh, so, yes. do you think uh, Mendelian genetics, the knowledge of Mendelian genetics, could actually help uh, reshape uh, uh, medical health policy in some way or form? Yeah, absolutely. Because now, if you see even ICMR, Indian Council of Medical Research, so they have a huge program on uh, rare diseases, even DBT funded to uh, uh, CDAP, very huge uh, funding to work on. Uh, pediatric rare diseases. So, um, so everywhere genetics has been taken as one of the major trust area uh, because that has direct implications on health of the uh, individual or population as a country as a whole. Uh, in, in order to have a very healthy generation in the future, so one has to adopt genetics to understand uh, what kind of mutations either individual or the population carries and what impact that has uh, in the individual or the population, how to either correct or how to avoid those mutations. So there are various steps, as you know, that if you wanted to correct, there are certain um, aspects, including CRISPR-Cas, uh, but it's not uh, taking it very, very fast rate, it's very uh, low level. Uh, there are many other aspects, including cell therapy and many more. Um, then any genetic disease, it's better to avoid rather than curing, right? So people are thinking in that level, uh, once you identify the mutations and people are now wanted to go for prenatal diagnosis and uh, before that they want to spend money in doing exome sequencing, even for unknown, cars, they wanted to identify the cars so that they are thinking about the future. Okay, so now the common people are well aware of that. Uh, so that means that uh, the Mendel's work and his contribution is now people are seeing uh, in their own health perspective. Absolutely, sir. Um, I think, uh, especially with things like COVID, uh, the people have really started focusing on science, on genomics, on techniques that can actually help them. Um, but still, I think there is a lot of scope of improvement. I think there is a lot we can do, especially as researchers, uh, to improve the knowledge of the people, maybe so that, you know, better awareness can prevail, which would then in turn, uh, hopefully uh, shape public and uh, health policy. So, sir, what, how do you think, what steps could we take to actually get the message across to the common man? How can we spread awareness about it? How can we um, educate the common man about uh, Mendelian genetics and, and, you know, all its implications? Yeah, so as I mentioned, people are now getting to know about that. Uh, I can highlight some of our finding, how it has a direct impact on the public health. Uh, even without knowing whether that particular population has any disease or not. But if genetically, when we did the genetic work, looking at so 1 million genetic markers across the genome of several individuals of a particular population, right? Similarly, we analyzed more than 250 different populations across South Asia, not only within India. And we predicted that there are some population, uh, in fact, one third of the Indian populations or South Asian populations 
are probably carrying a population specific recessive mutation which might lead to population specific recessive disease okay so now we are going back to the population and uh, i collecting more number of samples and sequencing both exome sequencing and whole genome sequencing to identify the mutation right so once the mutations are identified then even just few hundred rupees is sufficient to screen every individual in that particular population so now what we have seen and projected that one third of the indian populations probably carrying a population specific recessive mutation so you know that recessive mutations are the one which is hidden in the population right, right? Uh, they are the individual who carry the recessive mutation that means one of the chromosome is normal one chromosome carry the mutation but the individual absolutely fine right because of the marriage system exists in india that's uh, either consanguineous or endogamy endogamy that means marrying within the community as right. probably you can yeah. say extended consanguinity so what happened because the recessive nature it's not going to cause any disease and uh, the population the, the marriage is happening within the population therefore this mutation frequency increased in the population and uh, after some time you may find that uh, two individual they today they may call as unrelated in a same community carrying the mutation who marries and they contribute the abnormal chromosome to the next generation therefore the next generation uh, is going to have a homozygous mutation this is a mutation going to cause the disease in fact this is what we predicted but and when we try to look at some other population specific disease in fact we find very high number of such diseases um in certain populations okay so that tells that whatever we predicted genetically there is going to be a high number of recessive disease which is very very much exist in most of the indian population so what i am trying to say is that in the future okay and this genetic information if it goes to the population they understand right if we screen the population with that particular mutation and we can actually give a uh, premarital uh, counseling and say that okay you have the mutation recessive condition you don't marry individual with the same recessive mutation you even if you marry you have to uh, look for this particular mutation the fetus and see if there is a homozygous mutation or not is that the case then you can uh plan either to terminate or uh that's up to you to decide okay or if you marry somebody without the mutation then no problem even the next generation going to have heterozygous mutation okay therefore there's no problem at all so all of this is going to come in the future right okay. so so that's going to be a very very uh direct impact on the population so how can we incorporate this into uh, our let's say either policy or scientific workflows how can we take this technology because the technology exists uh, how do we then take it to the people how do we ensure that the people have access to it i know now if anybody the the, the new project which i said which we are taking up in in cdfp mission program on pediatric rare diseases okay so now we have collaboration with the 15 different centers who are doing genetic work across country and they are going to screen the routine screening if there is a child with uh, some um, unknown uh, phenotype okay so they will do initial screening if they don't find any uh, mutation so then they will send the sample to cdfp then we'll go for either exome sequencing or the whole genome sequencing and then we will do functional analysis to understand whether really the mutation is the real cause for that not we'll do um three different model system one is a zebrafish drosophila and mouse 
and we find the phenotype which, which is existing in the child, then we understand, okay, this is the cause. Then we actually transmit that to the family, then to the population, right? So there's a workflow. It comes to from patient to the lab, from lab to the patients through the clinicians. So, so that is the, the primary uh, aim of this project. That's so it, and we are going to communicate this information to local language because they're all inbuilt in the project itself. Right. That uh, we have to advertise this to the public in different languages, a very short video clipping for a few seconds that, okay, so if you have any, any child or children with uh, unknown uh, disease, you contact different centers, uh, then we'll take it up because, because the initial stage uh, is going to be a project mode. So we don't, we'll not charge anything to the patient. So if we do free of charge, so they'll come forward and uh, get it done uh, through this. So this way, if you do, this is a five-year project, I'm sure that will have at least some impact. Definitely, sir. I think it's going to make a huge, huge impact and, and create a blueprint that many other labs across the country can follow. Um, sir, uh, this brings me to my last question to you. Um, what advice would you give to young researchers, researchers who are just starting out? Um, how can they take their science to the common man? How can they uh, bring about practices or changes uh, such that their work becomes translational in nature? Yeah, that's very important for, uh, you know, uh, inspire the young colleagues, right? The student or a young colleague. Uh, very, very important. Uh, whenever I give the talk, because I always end with the... Uh, the finding which I said that one third of Indian populations are with uh, population specific mutation and going to cause population specific disease. So I communicate in a way that two matters. So one is that the endogamy or population specific marriage is one of the reasons for that because whenever I'm talking to the students, so you think that this is one of the cause. So even for their personal thing that would be helpful. The second is a lot of opportunity. So one third of the population, if you consider 4,600 endogamous community in India, one third, so at least 1,000 or 1,500 uh, population going to have uh, such a disease. We, nobody knows about it. Even the scientific, even the, not only scientific, even the medical communities are not aware of that. Right. So right. this is, yeah, it's only in the research stage. So anybody can go and work on this. this is a very, very wide uh, opportunity for uh, the young students to take up the genetics as their career. Okay. So that I always tell them that is glad that we have raised this question. And most important, I want to also highlight the mitochondrial diseases. Because this was thought that it's maternally inherited, right? Because all mitochondria and mitochondrial DNA comes only from the mother, not from the father. So all the mitochondrial disorders are earlier considered as maternally inherited. But now we are finding that a large number of nuclear genes responsible for causing the mitochondrial disease. Okay, so now. So Mendelian, because earlier we thought that mitochondrial disease are not Mendelian disease. Now it is also contributing to mitochondrial disease. So even more opportunity. Right. So there's no lack of opportunity. You just need to have a curious mind and then just go at work. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Thank you for those inspiring words, sir. It has been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, and yeah. thank you so much for taking time and having this really informative talk with me. Uh, Thank you. And, uh, uh, I'm glad that uh, you have taken up this kind of uh, um, interviews and uh, it will be definitely useful to the young generation. Thank you very much and wish you all the very best. Thank you so much, sir.